All right, today on the table of the RF-15 and the Smith & Wesson MMP-15 Sport 2. You will see a price split of about $131. The MMP-15 Sport 2 being about $131 more. Now, the MMP Sport 2 is also a heavier firearm. The RF-15, it comes with a pretty cool handguard. I like that a lot because it's probably going to change it out anyway unless, of course, you like the look of the factory one. The MMP, uh, it's got a cheaper handguard on it. It doesn't have the metal heat shields underneath it. This is just a plastic handguard. This is a 1.9 twist on the MMP. A 1.7 twist on the RF. The overall look of the firearm, the MMP doesn't match the upper and lower at all. And the RF, there's a bunch of blems on this rifle. Right here, it looks like they went too far back with the threading on the buffer tube. And they cut into right there. And then your stock, it gets stuck in the front because there's too much threading, I'm guessing. It hooks on there. Also right there on the upper receiver. Now the Sport 2 does have a AR-15 bullet carrier. But it is chrome lined. The RF has an M16 bullet carrier. Uh, this is not a chrome line bullet carrier. Now Rob Ski actually tested this rifle and it made it to 4,300 rounds, but then he wore out the gas rings and he broke the cam pin. I believe that's because this carrier is not chrome lined. Snapped uh, in half. So uh, first there was the gas rings and now the, the camshaft just snapped. And uh, basically this just told, tells you, you know, I was very excited about Now I know what you're thinking. Everybody preaches, oh, melanite finish is just as good as chrome lining, but you maintain your accuracy. I don't believe it. Now this test is performed on brand new carriers that are freshly oiled with the cam pin and firing pin missing. Dirty them up and add those parts back to it. And I believe the split's gonna grow dramatically. I'm attempting to demonstrate that the melanite surface is not as smooth as the chrome line surface. It will cause premature wear on your parts and added friction to wear out your barrels faster. Now if you listen carefully, you can actually hear the melanite treated bolt right over top of the tooling marks where you cannot hear that in the chrome line bolt. I've only seen two tests. Uh, I forget the one guy's YouTube channel, but I'll run some clips in. His, his melanite started choking, where the chrome line pressed on all the way to the point where it melted the gas tube. Color me impressed. Yeah, there it was. I can see the gas tubes ruptured. Then they were going to cut the barrels open and check the damage and see which one wore more. But the barrels got lost in the mail, so that never happened. Extracted or injected, um, I guess, depending on how you look at it. And then another round trying to go in the chamber. So it was sort of a double feed, but one of the rounds was halfway out of the mm -hmm. receiver. That was like 90% of those malfunctions. So just to clarify, that is what we were looking at when I was looking mm -hmm. at it. You can see it pretty close. It's very close portions of the video, but I think people were watching on their cell phone or whatever and, and couldn't see it all that well, and I got a lot of questions. Yep. Type of malfunction that we mostly got. That yep. Let me just go ahead and stop you right there. Basically, he's going to go on at this point in the video to blame the melanite failures on the size of the gas port, which, okay, they're supposed to be the exact same rifle. So either you change the gas port between the two barrels to try to give one an unfair advantage, or let's face it, the chrome line barrel outperformed the melanite, like we all knew it was going to. And I really wish you wouldn't have done that because this video series is full of very solid information that's priceless to the shooting community. Which I'm really hoping you guys go in the description and click the link and just watch their video series. The information about bimetal bullets and stainless steel barrels is spot on. What he should have said is yes, 
the chrome line barrel, I'll perform the melanite. But for us to produce accurate barrels at the price point the shooting community demands, we have to go melanite. In order to get solid accuracy out of a chrome line barrel, we'd have to outsource them from a manufacturer that mastered chrome lining years ago and is willing to discard any barrel that is not on par with melanite accuracy. So the question is, what do you want? Do you want affordable, accurate AR-15s? Or do you want to purchase AR-15s with all the bells and whistles where just the barrel and parts kits cost more than we can sell you a completed rifle for? Until I see an exclusive test proving that chrome line or melanite is just as good as chrome lining, I'm not going to buy it. As far as I'm concerned, if you want reliability and you want longevity, you got to go chrome line. If you want accuracy, then you can go melanite. But pressing on, on the RF you do get a lot of cool features. Uh, first off, your lower receiver is a lower is a low shelf lower receiver. Your MMP15 is a high shelf. If you're not familiar with that, uh, just click on this link right here, and I go into a lot more detail on what the difference is between the two. Uh, you get this pretty cool bolt release. Sticks out really good. Looks way different than the factory one. That's what your factory one would look like. Uh, you also get an extended mag release. That also looks pretty cool. This is what your factory mag release will look like. Your pistol grip is also different. This has your factory GI pistol grip. This one, it's fatter. It actually helps with getting your tr trigger finger in the right spot. Uh, just makes you want to hold it out a little bit more so you don't have a bad trigger pull. Myself, I actually prefer the GI one better just because I'm familiar with it. I'm not saying that one's a bad one or anything, but this just feels more natural to me. Uh, your MNP, the right here, it's just forged right into the lower receiver, but it is big enough to where you shouldn't have a problem shooting this with gloves. This has got your standard GI one where you can push the button. And drop this out of the way. I like the look of this one better myself. Uh, it's pretty much personal preference, so I don't really see an advantage to having either one. This one says fire safe. Then on the other side, it repeats. Very cool logo. This does also come up with a flip up iron sight, which is nice because if you decide to run glass on this, you're not wasting anything. You can shoot this just by buying it because it comes with irons. So then if you want to put glass on it, it'll hang over top of that. This one's got the picture of the bullet. Uh, normal one, then a bullet with an X through it, and then a rapid fire bullet. Same on here. I think that's pretty cool because if they ever do lift the 86 band, then it's already marked in. You just have to change out a couple of parts, drop in your auto sear, and this one's ready to go. This one, you could not do that. This rifle would require some pretty heavy machining to be able to go to full auto if they ever lift the 86 band. This does have a pinned in gas block. I like that a lot. I like my gas blocks pinned in. I've had the Allen screws. I've had the Allen screw gas blocks break my heart before. This one is Allen screwed in. Uh, the screws don't look staked either. Kind of wish that was staked. Neither of the two castle nuts are staked on. But I think both rifles are great. Uh, myself. I actually kind of like this one a little bit more, you know, aside from the issues of the non-chrome line bolt carrier and the non-chrome line barrel, but this one don't have a chrome line barrel either, so I guess that really doesn't stand over that one in that aspect. But it comes with a whole bunch of cool stuff. Like, you get a hard case with it. Trigger lock, sticker, uh, this rubber thing. It uh, looks like it's Velcro, so you can put it on like a tack vest or something. A USB drive. I didn't put that in the computer to see what's on it. I don't know, I've just always been afraid of like uploading a virus. And the fact they can give you that stuff and still maintain a cheaper price than the Sport 2, this would be my pick. But thanks for watching. Leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why. Don't forget to subscribe.